folks, today I'm going to visit the unbelievable world of general relativity. You probably heard about GPS, the Global Positioning System. Let's go visit Professor Mathematics and see what he has to say about this pillar of mathematical physics. Come on! <laughs> Professor, are you there? Professor! Ah, but? Oh, it's you again. What time is it? Hi, Professor. I didn't wake you up, did I? Who can sleep when people yodel in their ears, like in the Swiss Alps? What is it you want to know this time? I was wondering about GPS. <laughs> um, GPS, you know, the Global Positioning System? GPS work, Professor. GPS is yet one more confirmation of relativity theory. If it weren't for GPS, we would not know what time it is. And we would not awaken people at the wrong time. GPS works by trilateration. If you want to know where you are, all you need to know is the distance to three reference points. Each distance is the radius of a circle that has each point as a center. Where the three circles meet is where you are located. GPS is like this but it calculates your position with spheres. The more spheres, the more accuracy in your location. GPS receivers use the constant speed of light and calculate the time it takes for a signal to travel from the satellite. Das is the distance from each satellite. Das is your correct location on Earth. Um, sounds simple enough, Professor. Uh, what's this got to do with relativity? GPS is a confirmation of special relativity. My dear colleague Albert Einstein, may he rest in peace, made the prediction that time dilates. In space, time stretches like a bubble Einstein gum. Einstein confirmed that time dilates? Yeah. There is no more to say on this matter. Um, professor, all I see are melted clocks. <laughs> Maybe they should call it clock dilation. <laughs> you doom cop! Do you see time stretching and contracting in outer space now? 
You are not supposed to take the analogy literally. Phew. What was that, Professor? That is the four-dimensional accordion of space-time. It squeezes and expands, creating the music of the spheres. I thought for a moment there that, you know, I thought you were saying that time dilated for real. <laughs> of course it is real. You must study math if you want to know science. Um, yeah, uh, all this time I thought time was just a concept. Einstein told us that time in space runs at a different speed than on Earth. I had no idea time went anywhere. We use the speed of light as a ruler to measure distance. Little C, right? So one observer sees the other observer's clock run slower. Poor eyesight, probably. That is why we must make corrections for these distortions of time. Oh. <clears throat> you know, Professor, I never take uh, relativistic effects into consideration when I adjust my watch. Of course you never have, you dumb cop! Do you want to feel the four-dimensional accordion again? You don't need to because you are in an inertial frame of reference. Actually, I usually make the adjustment in my bedroom. It is hopeless. It is when you are accelerating across great distances that you need to make corrections. Uh, professor, how is it that the um, controllers on Earth adjust the uh, distances between satellites? The satellites carry superatomic clocks. They crank them up like you crank Mickey's arms on your watch. They adjust the time oh, until gee. they match the desired result. Well then, you know, I'll just leave triangulation, or, or whatever it's called, to the old school magicians. I think I'm going to continue adjusting my clock by hand, you know, like I always have here on Earth. I don't know why I bother. The new generation is lost. They are all nincompoops. They don't study math. They go round and round and round in circles and never learn anything. Professor!